voice of God calls us to awaken him. How will he find us when he comes? Awake and ready! And when he asks us to dedicate our lives ever more perfectly to him, how will he find us? Awake and ready! Divine Mother, Divine Mother, Mother Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, Father, Friend, Beloved God, Friend, Beloved God, Great Master, Great Master, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, Baba Ji Krishna, Baba Ji Krishna, Lahiri Mahashaya, Lahiri Mahashaya, Swami Sri Yukteswar, Swami Sri Yukteswar, Beloved Master, Beloved Master, Paramahansa Yogananda, Paramahansa Yogananda, Saints of all religions, Saints of all religions, We humbly bow before for thee, we come to God for thee, and invoke your presence. Invoke your presence. Give, us the Give us the strength and courage to conquer delusion, to conquer delusion. By, opening ourselves. by opening ourselves to your flow of divine grace. To your flow of divine grace. We will reason, we will will, but guide our reason, will, and activity to the right path in everything. To the right path in every way. Oh, peace. 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 Good morning, everyone. Can I have a seat? It's good to see you, Joe. Life is a dream.
The first is an impulse born of the sense of past familiarity. Life like a lotus evolves out of the mud of lower consciousness toward the light of divine awareness. Subconsciously, we imagine ourselves comfortable with the stages we've traversed so far, but we are not always so ready for the adventure of further growth. The second current in life is the soul's impulse. We cannot find happiness in turning back toward the mud. Fulfillment lies only in reaching up toward perfect divine awareness. To achieve it, we must be alert in everything we do. For in the flow of increasing wakefulness lies the joy we all are seeking. And now let's affirm together first in a strong voice. I am awake. I am awake. awake. Energetic. Energetic. Enthusiastic. I give my full alert attention. I give my full alert attention to everything I do. To everything I do. Knowing that in absolute consciousness. Knowing that in absolute consciousness. I shall find God. I shall find God. And now taking it into a regular speaking voice. I am awake. I am awake. Energetic. Energetic. Enthusiastic. Enthusiastic. I give my full alert attention. I give my full alert attention to everything I do. To everything I do. Knowing that in absolute consciousness. Knowing that in absolute consciousness. I shall find God. I shall find God. And now in a whisper, but with even deeper focus at the point between the eyebrows, I am awake. I am awake. Energetic. Energetic. Enthusiastic. Enthusiastic. I give my full alert attention to everything I do, knowing that in absolute consciousness, I shall find God. And now silently broadcasting it at the superconscious level, mentally, I am awake, energetic, enthusiastic. I give my full alert attention to everything I do, knowing that in absolute consciousness I shall find God. And pray silently with me. Let me pray always with alert, awake attention to thy listening presence, knowing that thou dost hear the merest whisper of my thoughts. Oh, peace. Amen. Amen. Good morning, friends. Happy Sunday. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Dharma Devi, and this is my husband, Narayan, for those visiting and those joining us online who may not know us. And this is week 34 from Rays of the One Light Weekly Commentaries on the Bible and Bhagavad Gita by Swami Kriyananda. How should we meet our test? Truth is one and eternal. Realize oneness with it in your deathless self within. Oh, that's nice. Thank you. <laughs> the following commentary is based on the teachings of Paramahansa Yogananda. Last week we considered Satan's temptation of Jesus in the wilderness after his baptism by John. We discussed the question, does Satan exist? All of us experience temptation of one kind or another in our lives. Some of us frequently, others only occasionally. Whether temptation comes to us from our own subconscious or from outside ourselves is secondary to the fact that it does come and that we must deal with it. More important then is the question how to deal with it. In fact, how to deal with tests of any kind. Martin Luther flung an ink pot at the devil who had appeared to test him. A dark stain on the wall of Luther's cell is pointed out to tourists in support of this story. Unfortunately, our trials are not often so summarily dismissed. As a fellow monk once said to Swami Kriyananda, speaking of Satan, if only I could get my hands on him. Mm. Jesus, during his temptations in the wilderness, overcame them and thereby set an example for all time by clinging the more determinedly to God. 
As Paramhansa Yogananda used to say, darkness cannot be dri driven out of a room with a stick. Once you turn on the light, however, the darkness will vanish as though it had never been. Jesus manifested this principle. The Bible tells us, therefore, that at last, the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. In the Bhagavad Gita, the point is clarified further by the added explanation that there are three qualities in human nature, sattvic, or spiritually elevating, rajasic, or ego activating, and tamasic, or spiritually darkening. It is this triune aspect of human nature that the third chapter refers to with the words, as fire is hidden by smoke, as a mirror is dulled by rust, and as an embryo is enclosed in the womb, so is the indwelling self enveloped by desires. Yogananda explained that each of these examples describes one of the qualities or gunas Sattva guna, that which elevates our consciousness, can be freed of any identity with ego by a little puff of meditation and right affirmation. Raja guna, which embroils the ego in restless activity, can be worked off with a little more and a little longer effort. Tambo guna, embracing as it does such mental states as laziness and stupidity, can be out, only outgrown in time since it inhibits even the desire for self-improvement. The example Jesus gave us was intended more for those in whom sattva guna is predominant. But if you yourself find elements in your consciousness that resist even the effort to cling to God in prayer and meditation, don't despair. Patience, as it has been well said, is the fastest path to God. As long as your efforts take you steadfastly in the right direction, you will come out right in time. Remember Yogananda's words, a saint is a sinner who never gave up. If, however, your nature impels you, even against your will, to move in the wrong direction toward egoic desires and away from God, strive at least to detach yourself mentally from your wrong actions, which are induced by habit. The time will come when their own stored up energy will tire and diminish. At that time, if you have not contributed to that energy by your consenting will, you will find it possible at last to redirect your energies more constructively. Thus, through Holy Scripture, God has spoken to mankind. Oh. of anger that have burned my brain, stressed my nerves, and poisoned my very blood. O oh, Father, when I am tempted to be angry, place before me a mirror of introspection. Let me see my face then distorted and ugly with wrath. Father, as I don't like to be seen disfigured, let me not show myself before others with a face made repulsive by wrath. Father, help me to dissolve this anger like a lump of earth cast into a lake. Want of self-control only makes me and others shudder with misery. Bless me, that I may never injure the love I bear others and their love for me with selfish knife thrusts of vexation. Bless me that I feed not my anger with more anger. Teach me how to cure any wounds it inflicts by applying the salve of self-respect and the balsam of kindness. Command every storm of anger that arises suddenly to pause ere it breaks, lest it engulf my mind. 
Help me to see only kindness reflected in my mental lake. Why disturb those calm waters with blasts of disharmony, producing only misery and useless agitation? Show me, Father, that even my self-appointed worst enemy is still my brother, and that thou lovest him even as thou lovest me. Dharma Devi and I had an incredible uh, week. We were up at Ananda Village, and like most of you know, for Spiritual Renewal Week. And this is a tradition that Swami Kriyananda started 50 years ago. Yogananda started this uh, tradition as well, of course, of having one week of renewal every year. You know, and you think when we take up the spiritual path, well, it's, it's all so clear. We know where we're heading, we know what we want. But of course, we need that constant renewal. And every time we go to a non village for spiritual renewal week, I always come away feeling, you know what? It lived up to its name. <laughs> I really did feel renewed. Um, all the, what was most touching for me this recent experience was the feeling of unity from the community. Um, what's going on in our world today? with so much divisiveness, negativity, heading towards war. And of course, it's about the disharmony and the lack of peace that we have within our own hearts. And of course, that's what we're, it's projected in what we're seeing in the world today. And it was such a stark contrast when you're in Ananda village. And there is a Saturday evening, there was a temple dedication, a groundbreaking for where they're gonna be building this temple of light. It was one of the most beautiful experiences I've been a part of at Ananda. They did a strolling kirtan and they carried the big murtis of the master, like this one here of Yoganandaji, and the monks were carrying the murtis. And I, we were telling our friend this the other day. I said, Yeah, the monks were carrying the murtis. And she said, The emojis? I said, no, no, no. No, they were carrying emojis. <laughs> She said, what do you mean? You know, this emoji that I'm just mind up. And we got the murtis of the masters. And, and then Jyotish and Devi broke the ground and they poured uh, holy water from Lourdes, from the Ganges, from Lahiri Mahashai's a bowl that he used to use. They filled the ground with Kriya petals. And it just, there was such a feeling of like the skylight, you know, God's light descending onto that spot and creating a holy sanctuary even before this temple has been built. And then we all process down to the amphitheater and they, there was a concert interspersed with some quotations of Yogananda and Swami Kriyananda on community and, and this sort of thing. And at the end, they gave everyone a little tea light candle, you know, like these we have on the altar, but they're electric because it's, you know, forest fires, you know, whatever I'm having a real light. And we sang the song that we'll sing today in our festival, Thy Light. So we were singing Thy Light Within a Shining, everyone had the candle. And behind the choir, there was this video of what the temple would look like. And the Temple of Light is this kind of oriental dome-like structure that comes up with a blue roof. And there's a lotus on top, but it's a translucent lotus flower so the light just like the skylight can come down and so the video was happening and we went up you know in the video you went up through the lotus and then you saw the masters and swami and then it was the spiritual eye you know the five-pointed star here and you went through the star and then the song ended and i tell you it was one of the most uplifting experience it just completely changed my consciousness and it was this feeling of unity, of world brotherhood, that this is why Paramahansa Yogananda and Swamiji were so enthusiastic about this idea of world brotherhood communities, that it is the healing balm, like that whispers from eternity, for all of the world's problems today. And it's much better shared through example than precept. Right, all the preaching, <laughs> the preaching in the world <laughs> won't do it any good. It has to be. That's what self-realization 
is all about. It's in the living. And that is what this topic is on today. You know, how do we meet our tests? How do we overcome our tests? You know, this, if you recall in the reading uh, last week and, and this week, this is when Jesus went out into the desert and had his 40 days of fasting, and then the devil came and tempted him three times. You know, and the first time was, well, if you're the son of God, if you have all these powers and you're, you know, you're hungry, why don't you just turn these rocks into bread? <laughs> turn these stones into food for yourself. And remember how Christ responded. Man does not live by bread, or bread alone, but every word that floweth from the mouth of God. But for us, you know, Davy was talking about this during Spiritual Renewal Week, that if we look at this test, this is like what the world is doing right now. It's not accepting, right? When we don't, Swamiji used to say that really all pain in our lives comes from not accepting things as they are. And when we, right, when we wish something were other than it were, what do we get? That's why I wanted to share this prayer demand on overcoming anger. We get angry. Angry Anger comes from thwarted desire. So if we can learn to come back to our home in God, to quell, that's why we always come back to this center of our heart and offering up our heart for purification. Because if the heart, uh, what did Christ say? You know, it's not what goes in a man's mouth that makes him impure, it's what comes out. Right? It's what's in our heart. That's what's that's what these what's going on with the world today, why there's so much anger and greed and selfishness. And so the way to combat that is for us to purify our hearts, to ask for God's light to come into our heart. And the opposite, you know, of anger, it's really the, the flip side of it is fear, right? We have a lot of fear and anger. Fear anger is wishing things were other than they were. Fear is you're afraid it's going to be something that it's not, right? You're trying, it's really two sides of the same coin. And the way to overcome is like Master said in his poem Samadhi, that the storm of Maya, it's then stilled by that magic wand of intuition deep. It's as long as we're on the surface of things, right? As long as we're caught up in the Maya and the delusion of a horse we're going to be suffering. Because the, it's, you know, what, what Pastor said, what Krishna said to him, get away from my ocean of suffering and misery. Of course it means we have to live in the world, we have to be responsible, but we get to a point where we're disgusted. It's that anguishing monotony that he talked about. And the way to break out of it, the way to overcome it, isn't to get more to fight anger with more anger it's to bring that healing balm of kindness but we can't do it on our own i don't know about you but i, I mean i recall 20 this about 20 years ago before i started meditating an embarrassing story that i'll share with you i was driving from the east coast on the jersey turnpike and somebody cut me off and i just on the horn, and I, I, I think that it, I, I swear it was probably seven seconds. I think I had a second for each chakra. That's like, that's like the only piece of like spiritual samskar I can draw out of that experience. I'm so angry that this person had cut me off. Forget about it, right? Jer for you Jersey folks. And you know, it's funny, I was thinking. Uh, some 20 years later, you know, just a few months ago, Dharma Devi and I were driving on Santa Monica Boulevard. I told this story a few months ago in service, and this, this guy, I was driving slow. Dharma Devi says I was spaced out, but I was looking for a parking spot. <laughs> <laughs> this, is the second, this is the second temptation, which is rationalization. <laughs> in a moment. <laughs> This guy pulls up next to me and he's like, hey, buddy. I was going about 25, right here on Santa Monica Boulevard, over here. He's like, hey, buddy, the speed limit's 30 miles an hour, not three miles an hour. <laughs> but you know what? 
I wasn't touched by his anger. I found it so humorous. I felt like, well, here's Divine Mother. She's yelling at me through this man. You know what? I was going probably a little bit too slow. <laughs> but this is the second, I mean, the second temptation that Christ faced, is that temptation then to uh, rationalize. You know, he was, the, the devil actually in that second temptation said, well, if the scriptures say, if you're the Christ, if you jump off this mountain, that you'll be saved. And so this is, right, when we ourselves get into rationalizing, uh, explaining our behavior away. Anandi was talking during spiritual renewal week. She said, watch this word that can be seemingly benign when you're using it to explain your behavior, this word because. Right? I am because he cut me off. I had the full right to lay on my horn because she acted in such and such a way. I have the right to be. And she said it's a very benign way that right, the ego can slip in there. And so how do we overcome, again, this rationalization? Um, these feelings also I think that uh, many of us face, right, which is also self-deprecation. Right? Beating ourselves up. Um, we're trying to overcome the ego, not place more emphasis on it. And so the way to overcome that, the deprecation, the rationalizations, is self-forgetfulness. You know, is to just allow God's energy to flow through us. And there is, I, I read, I, I have, I'm fascinated with near-death experiences and because it's very close to what we're after, right? When we, in our yogic death, is that freedom that people experience in God. And there was this man that had a near-death experience, and because he was a Christian, Christ came to him, right? And he said, well, when I go back, he knew that he had to go back to earth. I'm gonna build a big temple for you, building and a sculpture, because he was an artist, and Christ said, well, you know, I really don't care about that. You, know, you can do that, but that doesn't really do anything for me. He said, well, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? And Christ said, well, I want you to love the person you're with. And he said, well, okay, but then what do you want me to do? And he said, no, I, I want you to love the person that you're with. And he said, okay, you know, I, I got it, but then what, what, what kind of work do you want me to do? What kind of building, what, what should I be doing? He said, no, no, I, I want you to love the person that you're with. And he got it. But that, but you know, it's hard for us, isn't it? It's easy, like Christ said, it's easy to love your friends. It's easy to love everybody here that's so kind and sweet. But what about your so-called enemies and those that vilify you and persecute you, like Christ? We need that grace of God to open our hearts even more. It's that that gift of love, it's not our own. Like Swami wrote in his song, what is love? Is it only ours? Or does love whisper in the flowers? You know, love is that heavenly gift. But in order to uh, awaken its highest octave, we need to first love God and get into deep inner communion with Him. That magic wand of intuition deep where all of the drama of the world, the outer world, our personal dramas, it all just melts. Anger, greed, good, bad, salvation, lust, I swallow, transmuted all into a vast ocean of blood of my own one being. Remember in the festival, too, we say this every week. It's the answer to this reading. The little bird grew afraid. Oh, <laughs> you were here for Paul's storytelling. He was doing all sorts of sound effects, all, all sorts of sound effects. The little bird grew afraid. How I cried, can I fly in this darkness? And the wind answered, seek. If you, if you want to conquer fear and weakness, right, go to the heart of your own being. Where can I, or if you want to overcome fear and weakness, Go to that heart, and he said, well, where can I find it? And the wind answer, answers, go to the very depths of your own being, your own self. This is why Master called it self-realization. 
you are that is why it's love the person that you're with because everyone is a latent everyone is a potential Christ and we can honor that Christ in everyone even the temple of ignorance where the master met that man and he was he said I bow to the temple of ignorance <laughs> I guess the man was a fundamental but he still had a, a, a respect for him he respect every God will not encroach on our free will we, he's given us that sacred gift. So it's up to us to use our will, to align our will with him. And that comes through deep meditation and then serving him and others. You know, the final test that Christ faced there in the desert was then the devil saying, he took him up to a high mountain and look, Behold, all this earth, and you can you can run, and everyone will bow down to you if you worship me. You can have this whole world, right? And what did Christ say? Get thee behind me, Satan. There is one law: it is to love God and to serve Him. And then it said that he was not tempted; the devil left him. And then Christ began his ministry. And so this is why we have to. In order, if we want to love the person we're with, if we want to serve people in this world, we need to expunge this satanic force from our hearts. And remember, that force is just, it's the Maya force. It's just trying to create these fancy frozen boundaries. And that's why Swamiji put this affirmation of alertness with it, that I'm awake, energetic, enthusiastic, because of the idle mind, right, is the workshop of the devil. We need to have that constant vigil that we're always in ever-increasing wakefulness. And then we too, like Master said, from the spiral stairway of wakefulness, we will whisper in every fiber of our being, God, God, God. God bless you.